the FC gamma receptor is a critical receptor that's present on a variety of cell types, including natural killer cells. And it binds to the FC region of antibodies. So one of the things that uh, the immune system can do is it can use antibody-dependent cellular cytotoxicity uh, to um, direct an immune response against a particular antigen. In the case of, of monoclonal antibodies, since we're trying to use monoclonal antibodies, in this case, to deplete B cells, um, there has been work showing that polymorphisms in this receptor uh, change the affinity of binding of certain antibodies and can affect the uh, ability of that antibody to uh, deplete a particular cell. Uh, so, for example, it, with anti-CD20, with rituximab, polymorphisms in the FC gamma receptor alter the ability of rituximab to deplete B cells. So, for uh, this molecule, which is inabolizumab, directed against CD19, it was also possible that polymorphisms in the FC gamma receptor might affect the efficacy of inabolizumab. Now, uh, inabolizumab was specifically glycoengineered, uh, so they would have enhanced binding to the FC gamma receptor. And this um, uh, is an important uh, design element of inabolizumab. And so the uh, goal of this particular study was to determine whether uh, the the glycoengineering of uh, inabolizumab was effective and whether uh, inabolizumab could uh, effectively deplete B cells regardless of uh, the polymorphism in the FC gamma receptor. So that's the background. So it's, it's a bit complicated, but it, it is, it, it's how, how the immune system works. Uh, there are a, a, a couple genotypes to keep in mind here that were investigated. There is the FF genotype, and that's the genotype that's been associated with the decrease in efficacy of medications like rituximab. And then there's also the FV genotype, uh, which Im improves the ability of antibodies to bind to the FC gamma receptor. So the interesting thing that was observed in this study was that in the placebo-treated arm, so no inabolizumab, patients who had uh, polymorphism with the V allele, so it was the FV genotype, had overall an increased degree of disease activity. So as, as if this genotype contributes to NMO disease activity, and I, I personally think that's very interesting because we don't really see too many uh, genes that actually uh, have strong evidence to support a modification of disease activity in MS or NMO. So that this was observed in NMO, I think, was quite interesting. And so those individuals who carry that V allele have um, a greater propensity for uh, uh, attacks, hospitalizations, and disability outcomes, as well as uh, MRI uh, lesion formation. Now, um, with inabolizumab treatment, uh, the, the V allele um, uh, resulted in greater B cell depletion, just as one would think within the first six months. Um, um, but after that, there was really no difference whatsoever. So there, there may be a little bit of a difference in terms of initial response to that first uh, dose of inabolizumab in terms of B cell depletion. But after six months of treatment, it's the same, regardless of whether uh, individuals have the uh, FF or FV allele. And I think that's good news because basically it's telling, telling us that the medication is effective uh, regardless of the genotype, that the genotype that has been associated um, with decreased efficacy of rituximab, for example, uh, it does not reduce the efficacy of inabolizumab, and that with more than six months of treatment, uh, everybody does actually quite well. So it's a nice little study, and, and, and I think showcases a couple of uh, interesting features. Uh, one, um, uh, uh, having to do with disease activity, uh, being mediated in part by the allele, and then, of course, the more important observation that regardless of the uh, background uh, genotype, that um, uh, uh, inabolizumab is effective.